Hi. In this video, I'd like to demonstrate the solution of a basic physics problem using the Comdyna GP6 analog computer. The problem is the vertical projectile problem, which in simple terms is throwing a ball up in the air. In this problem, the ball has an initial velocity of 128.8 feet per second and it experiences the acceleration due to gravity of 32.2 feet per second per second when resistance is neglected as is usual for a simple problem like this. The analog computer can solve these kind of problems using electronic computing elements. This is a specifically an electronic analog computer or sometimes known as an electronic differential amplifier. It has computing elements in it that I'll get into in later videos, but the basic one is the integrator. So the analog computer can take a mathematical problem as its inputs and integrate it to produce the solution at its output. That's the fundamental uh, concept of the analog computer. In this problem, we scale the acceleration due to gravity here on channel 8. The oscilloscope is reading time in the x-axis from 0 to 10 seconds. So there is one second per division. And in the vertical axis it can travel from minus 10 volts to plus 10 volts. That's the excursion of the analog computer. In this case we're approximately point 6.4 in the negative. That's a constant voltage representing the constant acceleration due to gravity. It is scaled to be 0.64 approximately uh, divisions. So 0.64 uh, and do the math on that. 0.64 divisions times 2.5 volts per division gives me 1.6 but that's scaled by one half in order to make the problem fit on the analog computer. I multiply that times 2 to get 32. So that's the that's 32 feet per second per second in the negative direction uh, which is an approximate answer of the negative 32.2 feet per second actual parameter. So that's within the resolution of the system. That acceleration is the input to the first integrator in the system. And the, the integrator in the analog computer also has the ability to input an initial condition. So a scaled initial condition is applied to its initial condition uh, jack and the output of the integrator is seen on channel 3, output of the analog computer. So this would be the velocity of the projectile. As you can see, it starts at a positive value. In this case, it looks like approximately uh, 2.4 uh, divisions. And again, that's scaled. And what's interesting here is it crosses the time axis at the fourth division, which is four seconds. If you solve this differential equation or solve this physics problem using a calculator, you'll find that the velocity will reach zero in four seconds. And I think that's the reason the uh, the values were chosen, particularly the, the uh, 128.8 feet per second, gives us a nice round number for the uh, for the zero velocity point. Now the interesting thing is we can then integrate this function in order to produce the position function. The position function's initial condition is zero we assume the starting point is the zero, or we define the starting point of the problem as zero in the y-axis. So the next channel, which is channel two, shows the position curve. Notice it starts at zero on the y-axis, and 
increases due to the uh, initial positive velocity, but it increases at an ever decreasing rate until it reaches its maximum. And as we learn from calculus, it reaches its maximum when its derivative, being the velocity function, is at zero. So at the fourth division, we have zero velocity, and we also have the peak of the position function. And in this case, the peak is at approximately 2.6. I'll just call it 2.6 uh, because that's about the best resolution I can see from here. So I multiply 2.6 times the 2.5 volts per division. Then I further multiply that by the scaling factor. In this case, the scaling factor is 4. And I, uh, my answer is 250. Uh, the actual answer to this, if you do it on a calculator or a spreadsheet, is I believe 257.6. So that's a that's a significant error, but that's mostly because I I did not take a careful reading of the actual position on the oscilloscope. I just kind of eyeballed it there. Here is an Excel solution to the same problem, so as you can see the results are nearly identical. So you can get reasonable accuracy with the analog computer and it is really to me the more important thing is it gives you a really nice visual indication of the concepts of calculus. If we work backwards here we have a position function and on channel 3 we have the derivative of that function. And this is one of the interesting things calculus tells us is the tangent line here at, at the maximum, if you drew a line tangent to that curve, it would be horizontal, which means it has a slope of zero. And indeed, at that same point on the velocity curve, we're at zero. Uh, so that, that makes sense visually. In the beginning, we have a fairly uh, steep velocity corresponding to the high value of the velocity function here. And over time, you can see a tangent line traveling along with that would start at this axis, or start it in this deflection, and then gradually decrease in its slope until it reaches zero at the maximum of the position function, which is following this line right here. That's the velocity. Then once it reaches its the zero point in its in the slope of the tangent line, the slope actually inverts and goes negative. So that's following the same point on the velocity curve. Now the velocity curve is a linear function, so it obviously has a constant slope, and we can work backwards to the acceleration, and indeed that is a this could be considered the derivative of the velocity function on the computer, and it is indeed a constant value. It's a negative value, which corresponds to the fact that the slope is downward. You can also do uh, some of the more interesting demonstrations of calculus in that the area under the curve excuse me, the integral of a function corresponds to the area under the curve of the function, but that will require another video because it's a little complicated and it's definitely hard to do with, with these real numbers. I would demonstrate that problem with some even numbers, say an acceleration of 1 and an initial uh, condition uh, maybe of 8, and you could see that more clearly. So I think I've been going for 10 minutes here. I'll leave it at that. Uh, that's, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration of a basic calculus problem on an analog computer. I'll try to do more of these in the future as I explore the functionality of the analog computer. Thank you for watching.